The last two sections in Unit 5 deal with complex numbers, or in other words, imaginary numbers. And earlier this year, I tried to talk about some things that you, I told you we, you would see that we have never talked about or seen before in your math career. And one of them is what is called imaginary numbers. As you know, we've solved some quadratic equations. And it is possible, using the quadratic formula, underneath the square root to get a negative number of some sort. And that is what complex numbers or imaginary numbers are. What are they? Well, in our real number system, you can't find the square root of a negative number, like this right here. Square root of negative 8, that does, answer does not exist in our number system, or the square root of negative 4. It does not exist. So therefore, imaginary numbers were created so that there would be an answer to a square root of a negative number of any kind. That's what complex numbers are. Imaginary or complex numbers are the solution to square roots of negative number problems. So if you need to pause the video, please do that, and then I will show you how it works and lead you through some examples. All right, here's some very, very important notes. First of all, the square root of a negative number, or for instance, the whole basics, the basis of the complex numbers is the square root of negative 1. And in our number system, the square root of negative 1 is not possible. However, in the complex number system, the square root of negative 1 does have an answer. The answer is i for imaginary. So you need to memorize that. The square root of negative 1 is equal to i in the complex imaginary number system. And that's the whole basis for imaginary numbers. Square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Now, what I did in the bottom line, another relationship you need to know. I took this equation and I squared both sides. I squared the square root of negative 1 and I squared i. Well, what's in the circle, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is negative 1. And on the right side, I get i squared. So these two are really the exact same thing, just written in different form. You're going to use both of them. The square root of negative 1 is equal to i, or in other words, i squared is equal to our number, negative 1. So please, please highlight that in your notes, copy them, and try and memorize that. Now, how does it work? Well, very simply, way back in Unit 1, I taught you how to break up square roots. And, for instance, we talked about how the square root of 15 can be written as the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. Well, the same works with the imaginary numbers. So problem number one, I have the square root of negative 9. Any time that you have a negative sign on the inside of the square root, the first thing you need to do is break out the square root of negative 1. Because from the last slide, we know what that answer is. So I can rewrite the square root of negative 9 as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9 because these two numbers multiply together to give you what we started with on the inside. Well, the square root of negative 1 in, a, in the complex number system is the letter i. And we all know the square root of 9 is 3. Therefore, I get the answer 3i. That's what the square root of negative 9 is. It's 3i. Let's keep practicing. Number 2. 3 times the square root of negative 20. Well, we need to write this as a product of a bunch of square roots. Well, the 3 stays on the outside. The square root of negative 20, the negative sign's on the inside, so I have to write that times negative 1 times the square root of 20. Well, 
Now comes the, what we learned earlier this year. We need to break apart the square root of 20. Well, the 3 and the square root of negative 1 stay there, but the square root of 20 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So now we're going to simplify everything. The square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 4 is 2. So I times these three things together. So 3 times i times 2 is 6i, and then the square root of 5 just stays there because you cannot simplify that. So that is what problem number 2 simplifies to. Now, I would like you to pause the video and do problem 3 and problem 4 and see how you do. Okay, problem 3. Square root of negative 45. That's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 45. But now we can break up the square root of 45 into the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. So that's how we break that entire problem up. Now we just simplify. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 5 remains the same. So what I get is I get 3i square roots of 5 would be the solution or the simplification of this problem. And the last one. We've got a 2 on the outside. It just stays there. We've got square root of negative 75. So i got to break that apart. i got to pull out that negative 1. Now the square root of 75. This part stays the same. 2 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 75 is the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And now all we do is write the final answer. That's 5 times the 2 times this negative square root of negative 1 is i times the square root of 3. And 5 times 2 is 10 times the i. And so the final answer for this problem would be 10i square roots of 3. If you have further questions, please let's discuss it in class. But the last thing that I need you to write down, the last basics about complex numbers are how they're written. The general form of a complex number is a plus bi. And you just saw that we had a number of examples where b was some filled in number. But you need to understand that the A part is actually a real number, a number from our number system. And the BI part is the complex number part, or the imaginary number part, because the I is included. A, let me erase this, A and B will be elements of our real number system. So what I'm circling A and B, those are just going to be numbers like 2 or 3 or negative 1 or something like that. So an example of a complex number and how it's written would be, for instance, 4 plus 5i. The 4 is the real number part. The 5i is the complex number part. Another example could be negative 2 minus 3i. And again, this part right here doesn't have an i, so that's the real part. And the negative 3i, that would be the complex number part. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about adding, subtracting, and multiplying and dividing complex numbers. And you'll see more of that. But that's how complex numbers are written. And that's what imaginary or complex numbers are all about.